Good morning folks, well we're just heading into work but there's a change of plan uh, I've got in touch with a chap about heat exchanger, second hand, might even be third hand, so it's going to need some attention. Suitable for a five barrel kit, but it's 165 quid, which in my mind is pretty darn cheap for the piece of equipment I think we're getting. So if it needs any servicing or parts due into it, I'm sure I'll be able to wangle it, like a seal or something like that, I'll be able to make one. So we're going to cruise across there, because the heat exchanger is an essential part of kit and uh, pick it up. It's actually at King's Clipston Brewery, uh, which is Mansfield Way on, I believe. Your destination is on the left. Keep going. home, we've just been to see Dave at King's Clipston, he's a very nice chap, so if you see any King's Clipston beers on the market, buy them I'd recommend, but yeah he's working out of his uh, his shed actually, he's got a five barrel kit in there, uh, you probably just saw a little bit as we pulled in, but uh, yeah, I don't want to go around filming somebody's uh, brewery if they're not comfortable with it, but we picked up the five barrel or thereabouts plate exchanger he's had it for a few years but he's not been using it it came with his original kit but he changed it out straight away for a UK exchanger one that cost him about £800 so at least now I've got a figure so that when we upgrade this because I'll just use this one temporarily I've got a figure now when we upgrade that we want to be paying in the region of 800 for a decent 5 to 10 barrel heat exchanger it's a noisy road so there are a few gaskets on the plates that are probably worse for wear. So we'll take it apart when we get back to the unit, uh, have a look inside, give it a clean up. I think it's got one and a half inch RJT fittings to it, so we should be able to stick some pipes to it and uh, put some pressure through, see if she's leak proof. I fail that, I'll have to uh, get on eBay and get some gasket compound and we'll make some, we'll make some gaskets for it if we have to. Oh, so here she, here she is. Oh, probably weighs about 50 kilos. And looking in here, we're gonna have to change some of these gaskets for sure. So first things first, we'll test what size. All right, this is a one inch RJT nut. Oh yes. Well there's your answer McFly. Although I must admit, the fittings do look a little bit different to what I'd have anticipated. They don't have the internal section on them. I'm curious as to whether these are going to be any good or not. Well that fits on there, okay, well the gasket fits, so I guess, I guess it's a pass. Right, let's put a smile on your face, we'll time lapse it and we'll take it apart, provided it comes apart easily. just not even the proper gasket yeah 
Right, I can see what's been done on this particular unit. Somebody's put it together and they don't know what they're doing completely. So the back plate, which I think I found halfway through, should be blanked off. And what they've done is they've blasted holes through it. Now the reason it's blanked off is because you don't want any liquid hitting the face plate where they push together. So your first and your last plates should essentially be blanking plates. We've also got a couple more plates here that he gave me which weren't in the actual exchanger. So whether they're spares or you don't know what to do with them, we shall find out. But what I'm going to do is clean all of this up and then spend some time putting it back together how I think it should be put back together. And I will also, I suppose it doesn't matter if I mix these up now, I'll also be taking that It's this one here, look. I'll be taking this plate and this plate, which I predict are the front and the back, just the wrong way round, possibly. And what's happened is you can see there, that's not meant to be there, that hole. So I'll possibly be filling these in. That might be something that needs doing before I use this to get it back to how it should be. Hopefully I can do that without warping or changing the shape of this plate and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll work to sealing her back up and see how, see how she functions. I'll probably not get that done today though, this is going to need a good soak for a couple of days. There are a total of 43 plates in the exchanger. I've taken the gaskets off all of them pop them into a bucket of warm water to soak. Hopefully I'll be able to strip off any bits of glue, anything like that that's on there that shouldn't really be on there. You shouldn't need to be using silicon or anything to get your heat exchanger to seal. I've also noticed that while there are, I think 36 of these plates, which have this pattern on them, there are also another four or five, four, which have been tampered with some way or another. They've had extra holes cut in them that should not be there. I imagine these were the end plates. And on top of that, we've also got five plates with this diamond pattern on them. You can see if I place them together, they're very different, very different patterns there. So I think also different end profiles, if you look at that, slightly more round and this is more more of a square edge so I have a funny feeling I have a funny feeling that these five plates are out of a different exchanger and they're not out of the uh, out of the original so once I've got everything cleaned up I do want to give it a pressure test today but that means that I'm gonna to have to waste a couple of BSP sockets and one inch liners to fabricate some type of quick old fabric cobble connector to go onto the one inch outlets and do I really want to do that? It's going to cost me about four quid. I've got to weld them. It might be worth doing, it might be worth doing to see if it, if it works, if I get time to do this today. I suppose it makes sense because the sooner I know whether this heat exchanger is functioning or not, the sooner I can rectify the issue. I think though it's going to work straight off the bat. I don't think it needs resealing. I think it was just assembled incorrectly. So that is the uh, that is my initial initial feeling. What I'm going to do with these plates at the back. They should have been back plates, you see. So this one should not have had a hole in there. This is where the flow terminates. So this is the back edge plate. Then there's another one. That would have been the back edge plate for the, let's say the product. And that one's the back plate for the, for the cooling water. And they've punched holes in them and then tried to gasket up around the frame. Well, that's not how you do it. You don't want gaskets against this frame. 
this frame is effectively nothing to do with the cooling matrix apart from just a big clamping bar. There should be gaskets around the entry points, of course, but that wants to be one of the frame plate gaskets, not not fabricated O-rings that looks like it's been made out of, I don't know, a car in a tube or something. and girls I've managed to scrub the front and the back of the you know bolting down what would you call them the compression plates for the uh, heat exchanger and I'm going across now through all the all the single heat exchanging stainless steel plates and I'm beginning to notice after scrubbing this with warm soapy water that you might just be able to see Look, I'm pulling on this, it's like a, a sealant compound of some type, like a mastic, and that's telling me that this has leaked in the past, and that's the solution they've come up with. Alarm bells are ringing. I think though that this is why it's leaked. So what I'm going to do is spend some time, I mean the plates are beautiful, there's not a speck of corrosion on them. Some of them are slightly deformed up on the top edge where they've tried to compress it with more gasket material. But, like I say, I don't think that's the issue. The plates are good. So what I'm going to do is clean up all of this mastic. It's going to take a heck of a lot of time to do this. I'm already 20 minutes in on this one plate alone. And like I say, there are 40 plus plates. So you do the math. It's a full-time job there, it's a week's wage for somebody. So I'm going to have to try and find a better way to get this mastic off. I want to try some type of solvent, but these solvents that I have are nasty buggers and they crack your skin. So I'm going to have to get gloved up, eh? No glove, no love. Or, fail that, I think the most sensible approach is for me to just get something that's softer than the stainless steel but harder than the mastic of course like a some piece of a copper pipe or something like that and fashion it into a sharp edge and use that to scrape off all the bits of mastic you can see all the brown bits that's it that's what's got to come off and what i'm worried about is if i use a solvent then the solvent's going to dissolve and spread it across the plate which will make it nigh on impossible to remove or I'll need lots and lots of solvent and lots and lots of tissue to get rid of it all whereas pulling it off it's not dissolved and it's coming off solidly albeit slowly so what I'll probably do is take these plates back to the workbench form myself some type of tool and spend an hour getting this off before I actually wash them because at least then I'm not going to soak my workbench and I'm going to waste my time having to wait for them to dry and uh, cleaning them when they obviously will not clean I need to get this off some of them for instance are a lot worse than others so you can see, it's going to take some scrubbing to get this off, but yeah, anyway, it should pull off. It's pu it is pulling off. Let's give that a go.
so that's them soaking in there. The next job I'm gonna do while I leave them to soak is I'm gonna hit the back of the pressure plates with the buffing wheel and clean them up a little bit and make them nice and smooth. And I think that it'll just get rid of any staining that's on there and give us a nice flat surface for when we, when we put all this back together. Right, so first I'm gonna hit it with a sanding wheel because there are one or two high spots on where, the, uh, where they've done some welding work. And then we're gonna hit it with a buffing wheel to, to clean it up, hopefully. But I'm not doing this to take any material off, per se, apart from maybe around here, but just to smooth, to smooth it all out. Let's get some PPE on. In the midnight sky, you know times I have bright for you. I have So looking at them side by side, that's a lot shinier, cleaner, apart from the little bit of wax that's still on there, but we'll get that off with a bit of solvent. Just dribble a little bit on there. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, very, very nice, very nice and shiny. Much better, much better indeed. Right, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get into that to do that one, but only one of these plates potentially will come into contact with the cooling water. Neither of them will touch the beer, by the way. But I'll see what I can do. I might just have to belt that with a bit of sandpaper just to knock off the high spots. But that one's nowhere near as bad as this. It doesn't have a new weld in the corner and everything here is quite, it's below the level, below the flush level. But yeah, I'm pleased with that. Well, we've just had a delivery of Scrumpy Wasp Cider ready to go into the brew shed and uh, I went up there because Stuart had short changed me the bugger and decided that Jeremy says it's almost five o'clock I'm gonna go and have a pint Gemma's in Edwin still she's gone taking the kids over there I've got this stuff soaking I could really buff up the uh, the other side of the plate chiller but like I say I've got the uh, I've got the gaskets soaking and everything else. So do I really need to? Can I be bothered? If I'm quite honest with you, and frankly I can't. I really can't. I need to drag tanks in and do some welding on the fermenters. Can I be bothered to do that? No. It's Easter weekend, isn't it, folks? We I mean, I'm allowed some time off, aren't I? Just even a little bit? I think so. So the plan is, beer. Have you come down for that wine? Yeah, we'll stop. Ah. Some Sam Smiths. Someone was on that last night, a few of them bottles went. The Schneider Weiss. Very nice. Uh, been asked if we can get some taller glasses for it as well. Yeah, they are a bit, uh, that's the way they do the Weiss beers in the long snooty glasses. Anyway, I'm gonna go and drink beer. Can you turn the camera on? We yeah, we're on. Oh, fucking oh, hell. Dear. Yeah, that's pretty much the scope of it tonight. Uh, yeah, just say, yeah, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. I probably won't, we will. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah. Christopher, why, why are you filming me? Don't worry, it won't go on the internet. Oh, yeah, right, whatever, I've, I've touched this before. Well, the reason I've got this microphone on top 
is so you can record me saying this will not go on YouTube. Yeah. But I'm not going to say that. Tomorrow is the time I'm going to put you on YouTube. Tomorrow you can, because I'll be um, I'm the child on board, so I'm slightly tiddled. Nice choice of. <laughs> In the midnight sky